entangled in mundane things and frivolous animosities, it's always good to read a book that can take you to a different world, severing all ties from reality. In my case, no doubt, Mary Higgins Clark's books often did take me to a different world. Besides, Clark has always given me a Christmas feeling. It might be because I usually read her book when Christmas is around the corner. Besides, I love winter and how December feels like. It's mysterious, joyous, pleasant, and in some other parts of the world it might be snowing. It's a dream to celebrate Christmas with snow all around. I hope I may one day and I also think winter is the perfect season to read and write a cozy mystery. How about rolling yourself up in a blanket, reading a cozy mystery with a brewing cup of coffee? It sounds like heaven to me. And Mary Higgins Clark's books has always given me that feeling. Besides, there is Christmas, my birthday, her birthday. Yes, she was born on December 24, 1927 and I was born on December 2nd and that's why perhaps we have a December connection. And the month always reminds me of her. If I experienced a lull in reading, her books always woke me up from the slumber. So, since it's December, almost going to end, I thought I would talk about her books how they molded me to be a better reader, writer, and how those books changed my perspective on life. So, before I proceed, let me introduce myself. I am Shalit Jimmy. I am from India. I love books and I talk about them here. I am an avid crime fiction reader and a lover of classics. Hence, they predominantly constitute my read and to be read list. But I assure you, I have other genres too. Welcome to Charlotte Jimmy's Story World. Mary Higgins Clark is well known as the Queen of Suspense, whereas Agatha Christie is the Queen of Crime. No, they are not contemporaries. Clark passed away in 2020. So I'll start by giving a feel of one of her books. On the Street Where You Live is my favorite Clark book and here it goes. When criminal defense attorney Emily Graham decided to leave Albany and take up a plum job in Manhattan, she just had a peaceful life in mind. She was going through an acrimonious divorce and a devastating experience of being stopped. Call it a sheer coincidence, it was at this time her ancestral home, a restored Victorian house, also came up in the market for sale. And Emily was looking for a house to settle down. She did not have to think twice and she bought the house. Emily thought it would give her a sense of belonging which she was yearning for quite a long time. Her family had sold the house in 1892 when one of her ancestors, Madeleine Chapley, then a young woman, suddenly disappeared without a trace. Emily had just moved to her house. To her utter dismay, a skeleton was found in her backyard when it was being excavated for a swimming pool. She was identified as Martha Lawrence, who had disappeared around four years ago. But what bewildered everyone was that within the skeleton hand of Martha Lawrence was a finger bone of a woman with a ring on it and it was identified as the heirloom of Shapley family. So the question is, could it be the finger bone of Madeleine Shapley, Emily's great, 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 great aunt who had disappeared a century ago? And if yes, how did that appear with the corpse or with the skeleton of a woman who had disappeared or who had died four years ago? 
when the bodies of other women were found in the similar way police and emily understood that they were dealing with a copycat serial killer to be honest this book spooked me a little i have read this book twice and the first time i read it i was staying in a flat alone and it really sent shivers down my spine now this is what i like about her she could spook you without any gory descriptions and mutilated bodies she still has suspense and mystery that could put a reader on tender hooks right from the first page once she said she garners clues for her story from newspaper in other words she actually takes uh, the clues for her story from the real incidents that happened in the in the real lives of people so that the reader can relate to them easily what attracts me to mary higgins clark books is always the writing the language it's so simple yet profound that it would make you feel that you're not a detached reader when the characters run you run along with them when they jump you jump there were many times when i felt one with the characters when she writes i don't usually read the words but what i get are pictures clark is a writer who deals with different female protagonists in her books unlike the same detectives who appear in crime fiction series for example harry bosch in michael connelly books or dr k scarpetta in patricia conwell books or jane risoli or dr mora iles in tess garrett's in books even then her heroines are imprinted on my heart forever be it emily graham from on the street where you live or pat from still watch i just know how they look like how what their characteristic traits are such is the effect of her heroines on my mind i have read more than 20 of her books and what i'm going to say next is my most precious takeaway from her books i got introduced to competent female protagonist for the first time in my life through her books so when i say certain things you have to understand that i am talking about my experiences years ago probably more than 15 years ago and things haven't changed much it's still a bit regressive and i have evolved a lot and there's still a conflict of emotions so this is the backdrop Before getting introduced to her books I was reading fiction written in my mother tongue where I saw female characters um waiting for somebody men of course to salvage them from conflicting circumstances or emotions they were in dependent succumbing not questioning anything not raising voice for themselves accepting everything that came on their way and to my utter shock women who showed these characteristic traits were hailed as the ideal women and i could never accept that though i took years to put my thoughts into reality and i'm not a meek person so i could not be stoic as they are i do not know whether you could imagine living in a world you are not approved of and they don't approve of you either so crime fiction books which showcased competent independent female protagonist who solved their problems by themselves gave me new hope and when i started reading her i was just 16 so i will always be grateful to her for that 15 years after i am an independent person though i really have to work hard on being emotionally independent so this is my story and my experience with mary higgins clark books and if you have such books which has changed your perspective on life please do share please do comment and if you really like this review or if you really like my video please support god bless